All great plans for change start with something as small as a single idea. Ideas are fragile. They can fade over time, they can be swayed by doubt, or they can gain support and find a home to thrive. April's Earthkind Harmony Hero is an eco-teacher who is on her way to realizing a bold idea for a native plant trail to restore her community's ecosystem. And her idea, like the monarch butterfly she strives to protect, has proven to be resilient. In this conversation, we'll hear from agriculture teacher Carly Pavon on how to generate resilient ideas to make an impact in our communities. At EarthKind, we are so excited to name you as our Harmony Hero for the month of April. I'm so excited to learn where the idea of positive sensory experience came from. The idea of the sensory trail, it came from when we got back into school and COVID was still happening and my students didn't have a lot to do. We were burnt out. We were constantly staring at the computer screens. We weren't doing a whole lot of hands-on learning, which that's what we do in the agriculture department. Now the sensory trail is supposed to be a handicap accessible trail that serves a purpose for education for all. That is just wonderful that you took such a negative <laughs> experience and turned it into something so positive for so many. We decided that we needed something here on our campus that was for all of our students. That might be somebody who has a mobile impairment, a visual impairment, or an intellectual impairment. At each educational exhibit, we were going to teach about a topic. So it, it could be different wildlife to wildlife conservation, to the monarch butterflies and why they're so important, to pollinator gardens, to a, a, a bee exhibit where we talk about bees and pollination and why we need to have those and how killing bees is a bad thing. Could you share how the students have helped realize this vision? They saw a need when we were working with some of our different students who have visual or mobility impairments and they were like, guys, it's not fair. It's not fair that this student can't have access to soil and plants because they're wheelchair bound. They also have designed an ADA compliant raised garden bed and we wanted to have some kind of table but we didn't know what it would look like at all so we went to Lowe's and we bought a bunch of random things and we brought it back to the kids and I said all right guys here's a wheelchair here are the ADA compliances let's make this table and they made a table the student can roll right up to it it is round on the front half so that the plants are right there at the chest level of the students and to see that student use that table and the joy that came to him when he got to actually put his hands in the dirt that that was just mind-blowing because he's never had that opportunity before that is so heartwarming to me in a couple reasons one Lowe's is one of the the most forward thinking as far as disabilities and I've seen them do amazing things as a corporation and we work with them and we're very proud to work with them and Earthkind employees up to 20% of our assembly are handicapable citizens. And it's just incredible that you're creating that opportunity. Can you share with us what, what, the, what the future vision is? We want the trail to be fully handicap accessible. So we have to be able to lay down our materials properly and install them. We have a design on paper it looks wonderful. One of our students, Anna Kaplan, actually designed it and she's a senior and she's actually looking into going into this as a career, but we still have a long ways to go to actually get it to happen. Like I have tons and tons of different plants that we've purchased that are native to Virginia and native to the United States and we've removed all of the invasive species and we have pollinator houses that we've built and bird houses and owl houses but we still don't have the path laid down. We still don't have everything built that we want to have there. We want to have different way stations and educational exhibits designed. And we want to have the apple orchard, which are the trees that we're walking through, actually be able to be harvested. It's just 
been a very time-consuming project that I'm extremely passionate about and really hope to see actually come through and be something as amazing as we envision it to be. Carly, can you share with us what a trip to the Monarch Winter Home in the Central Mexican Mountains would mean to you? I personally don't know much about monarch butterflies. One of my students brought in some seeds and were like, hey, these are milkweeds, let's plant them for the trail. And I was like, oh, okay, heck yeah, let's plant it, like, let's do it. And then the student told me why it was so important. And then the more research we did, we decided that we were going to build an exhibit specifically for monarch butterflies. Being able to go and visit their location in Mexico for me would be an opportunity to further my education and bring it back home to my students and to be able to teach it more. What you're doing is truly amazing. Your vision is incredible. I think it's gonna be a role model for many in the future. And I'm, I'm so excited that you applied. Thank you very much for the opportunity and for the chance to just to show more people what it is that we're doing here at Pulaski County. We have such a small community and there's so many people who are invested in this project and just being able to get this out to more people to hear and see what we're doing is just a, a really great opportunity. Please watch our intro video where you'll hear from Dr. Court Whelan, National Habitat Adventure Guide and Entomologist, who will be accompanying the winner and three of their guests on this very special trip to the Monarch Winter Habitat in the Central Mexican Mountains. See you next month.